because after you have learned and have been programmed and have been educated and socialized into certain ideas and beliefs to come now to the knowledge that these beliefs are false are not based in reality you have to literally unlearn the things that made you come to that set of beliefs yes it's a process and it's not a simple one it's painful and it's vexing it's like uncovering that there is no santa and recognizing for years you were fooled it's like recognizing certain things that you were told that exist and as you grow in knowledge you know that they don't exist it's vexing but so it is with the things that have been given to us for the last 2000 years words thoughts ideas given to us as truth and we have to simply hold it but the time has come when we must now reflect on what we have been holding and check how much of that sort of information has been practical in helping I and I to us a liberated state. We in the post independence celebration on this land, August 6, 1962, the British finally got rid of the colony called Jamaica. And the British achieved their independence. They were no longer responsible for the affairs, economic affairs of this island. Strangely enough, they remain in control of the political and judicial affairs. So it's a tricky kind of independence that the island received. Most countries that secure independence through granting usually remain in the colonial mode. Countries who achieve independence through struggle and violence and bloodshed tend to defend the land and their principles in a much greater way. So we always like to talk about Cuba. But Cubans have shed blood for the, their own land. On the island of Jamaica, much blood has been shed, but not for the land. The blood has been shed for tribes what we call political parties, much, much blood has been shed here. So we're going to look in this metamorphosis now on this time that we are living in. This is 175 years after emancipation and 51 years after being given political independence. What is the state of affairs on this rock? There's also the global issue. I want to also touch on to the emancipation process that took place in North America on that larger plantation in that deep ice box. The black man has gone to more vi violence and brutality living in that great northern plantation than even right here in the sunny Caribbean region. Because living in the sun is a blessing. But think about living in the ice box. We're talking about black man from Africa living in the bitter cold of the south no protection living outdoors in huts talk about hell on earth and i have felt it so when i look at the emancipation of the black man and his mission to america to the point where we can have a trayvon martin and look as if look and see what has really changed in america on that plantation in terms of relations between the former slave and the owners. So right across this Western world, the plantocracy continues to dominate the way of life. The former slaves have now become factory workers. And the crop is no longer sugar and banana. The crop is now information. And that's what's being packaged and sent around. And different farmer working. But ultimately, slavery continues. But obviously it's not visible because people have cell phones and iPods feeling technologically advanced but we're going to look at the plantation i also want to look at jamaica now and after 51 years are we can we define ourselves as a country of bly i wanted to say that jamaica is now almost what i call a bly country because the oppression is so tense here that people have to look at bly and you get the bly because oftentimes those who are in position of giving the blight also overstand the oppression and the brutality and they tend to give you a blight but when you give up when you have a blight society now the discipline is hard to sustain 
And how do you separate now a bly from a bribe? Yes, when is a bribe a bly? And when is a bly really a bribe? Because we're having a lot of issues here you now, you know, based upon how we organize ourselves, how we administrate ourselves. Thing that we call injustice seems to be elusive on this rock. So I want to look again into the issues that separate and divide I and I and think about the opposite of divide and conquer. How do we overcome that principle? I think we should think about what his majesty has told us that we should organize and centralize. I think that ideology is strong enough to challenge the divide and conquer. And as a people, we have been under that siege and we're going to try to reorient ourselves towards the principle of organize and centralize. On the rock, of course, within the independence, what comes to the front is our national symbols. What is it that makes this place a nation? Because before the British left, we were considered a British colony. So God saved the Queen. Yes. In 1962, we lowered the Queen's flag, kept her as our head of state, but we raised a black, green, and gold. That represented now the new imagery of this independent island. So we developed what we call symbols. So the flag is one. Another symbol is the anthem. Another symbol is the national food. What the metamorphosis wants to probe into is the food. What has been created as the national food for this island. I want to look a little bit into the national anthem. The program began with the anthem. And the anthem starts with this word, Eternal Father. I want to them to stop and think deeply now, you know, about this concept of this Eternal Father. Absent, of course, of an Eternal Mother. What is the nature of this Eternal Father that must protect us from evil powers? Where and what are evil powers? So I want to look through that anthem. I want to look through the food. Aki and saltfish. The national dish. Both foods are alien to this land. And one of the foods by itself is poisonous. I am saying the aki and the saltfish, whoever constructed that as a national dish, wasn't thinking about the health and the welfare of the 95% African black people. I am saying that aki and saltfish is a poisonous dish. I want to look it at how it's connected to diabetes. How is that national dish connected to hypertension, which is a great cause of death and pain on this island? We're re-examining some of those symbols because some things are fundamentally wrong. Why, after 51 years of political independence, we are more tribal. We are more divided here. 366 Christian denominations, 63 MPs, Two, three, four sections of political groupings. Highly divided society wanting to find something that will make us more cohesive. Of course, we have sports, we have entertainment, and the glue that holds everything together must be culture. Metamorphosis, size of him. I don't make up high and I mind to go through the same thing like I and I for parents go through. No, people die. Cry blood, Africa. Cry blood. Cry blood, Africa. Cry blood. Who dare them to say that? 
cry. Africa cry. African people running all up all across this planet running in this island called Jamaica but sometimes the people don't recognize that it is really the African blood because the people have been alienated from themselves as being Africans identity issues confront and conflict the black people in this space denial of being black is a great sign of illness and it's prevalent right here by the people who are trying to run out of their own skins. Very, very difficult task. Now, the island is in its month of Marcus Garvey. This is the month of Garvey. And I and I should declare it Garvey's month. And try to use the time to internalize the philosophies and opinions of the first national hero of this island why was Garvey elevated to the first national hero what is it about Garvey that makes him a country's first national hero and what about him do we try to emulate people in America read George Washington and they thought that he was a truth teller and people quote Washington and telling you that you must speak the truth what is it that about Garvey that we try to emulate what are the teachings of Marcus Garvey why is no effort being made to put Garvey's philosophy and opinions into patois? Great amount of strength and energy to put King James and his version of reality into patois to further confuse the thought processes of the black African people here. Liberation comes with knowledge. And so if the black people were given the knowledge of the philosophy and the opinions of Marcus Garvey in patois, yes, transformation, but no, those who control the resources don't see that as a relevant act. They think that they must advance the cause of the queer named James. And in advancing King James' philosophy, what they are advancing is a philosophy of divide and conquer. And this is why we have to centralize in our consciousness and recognize oh, that we are in a state of war. Because the divide and, divide and conquer principle is a principle of war. And once it's being applied against us, it means we are also in a state of war. But you see, if you're in a war and you don't know, you're dead already. You see, if you're conscious that the war is on, you begin to organize yourself. 
you begin to organize it becomes automatic so the principle that i and i should be advocating is about organization and centralization no, we're not talking about anything religious we're not talking about no houses and no mansions we're talking about organize yourself first and foremost organize yourself organize your individual organize your eye get your eye organized yeah, structured, time-wise. Get some discipline within the eye. And once you can organize the eye, you're in a position to be organized with others. So organization is not about mass grouping. It begins with a peer. It really begins with yourself. You have to have yourself organized. And once you begin to organize at the peer level, we extend the groups of threes and fours and fives. That is how we talk about organization. The unity will come when the organized groups share similar objectives, economic missions, things will change. So the island here, after the 51 years of political independence, still more dependent, locked into the International Monetary Fund, locked into borrowing, locked into begging. Serious place to be. How do the people find the way out of this? Institutions are failing, the church, the state, education system, to who must the people turn? The people must turn to their inner self. They must turn to the cultural powers that are inherent in themselves. And within that internal turn, you question what is now is the basis of power. Because if you have no power, you're really a victim. So you ask yourself, what then is the basis of power? Money comes to the forefront. Recognize now that money is an important tool to secure. We also recognize now, even before money, the foundation to all power rests in the land. And in Jamaica land that we love, who is it that controls the majority of this land? Is it the 95% of the people? Well, the answer to that is no. The vast proportion is controlled by the Queen, who gave up Jamaica as a responsibility, still controls vast amount of land. So the Crown owns the land, and the Church owns the land, and the majority of people are powerless. So to organize and centralize and to get power, you have to begin to think about securing land. People from foreign are coming to Jamaica and buying out Jamaica land. And most of the Jamaican people are trying to go to foreign. We have to reverse that thought process and begin to secure the land. It is the basis of power. With the land, you can get money. Yes, you can go to the bank and do certain transactions and secure capital. And so you can advance the land. But without the land, Serious weakness. The metamorphosis moving into Iward sound and power.
Yeah, Metamorphosis in the month of August, giving you some rhythms to, for, to give you some text to the discussion at a certain level. We're into the I word sound and power segment where we look at language and we look at identity. Because we're into this independence examination. It always comes to the front to explore whether the people on this island are really Jamaicans. What is a Jamaican? Is it a national identity? Is it a way of being? Is it a way of life? What really is this thing called a Jamaican? Because previous to the Jamaican concept is Africa. So the, no matter whether we want to call ourselves Jamaicans or non-Jamaicans or whatever, at the foundation of our identity is the black man. So this nation is a majority black people. But it is not defined that way because of fear that somehow it's going to be offensive to the tourists. So we hide, are we going to denial about the majority of our blackness here? And we hide into this illusion of being this multicultural, multiracial, harmonious state. Fanciful. But it's a level of control because the greater majority have this great of um, a little bit amount of access to the resources that are really available on this land. Well, look, we could look into the, the role now that symbols play in helping to construct your identity. Because a symbol, you know, is really something that is, has a lot of information in it, a lot of coded information in a symbol. And we have chosen to, in this island here, look Use the national anthem as a rallying point, a point where emotionally people come together to, you know, embrace the idea of where you live. But you see, as youths, we don't sing the anthem. We start we to recite the words, and very often we don't explore what the lines of the words mean. We don't sing the song. Well, it's after a while, we have to begin to check everything. When we say check everything, we check everything that is in, becomes internalized and assess its value. And if it has no value, just like the computer, we reject it and put it in the trash bin. So this notion, this symbol of the anthem, it starts off by speaking about an eternal father. And the, what we see ourselves now as still remnants of a plantocracy. The chains have been removed, but the, the, the mentality and the psychology of the people are still that of slaves. So the slaves still need to have this master. The slave has been programmed over hundreds of years to have a master. So eventually, you know, if you were to remove the chains and tell the slave that he no longer has a master, he would say yes. But if you tell him that his master is now above, that his master now dwells above, and his master is now that eternal father, you know that I and I will remain slaves forever? Because this eternal father that we are asking now to bless our land and to give us wisdom from above, what we have done is disconnected ourselves and the responsibility of making good decisions. Maybe this is why today you now we hear about divine intervention. That the very leaders now are looking to something above to give them a response. So the anthem is very misleading. It takes I and I away from myself. It doesn't give responsibility to I to resolve I own issues. What the anthem says is that eternal father will use wisdom and will protect and us from evil powers give us light and all these things so what do we do for ourselves so a motto and as those symbols are supposed to motivate what could be motivating in the anthem is the anthem reflected some of the african black culture it's very british it's very stiff very churchical 
me I say, why not a little reggae in our national anthem? Yes, reggae, rhythm in the national anthem. No stiffness, man, a rock to the anthem. You better do it first before another country do it, like uh, Japan. Yeah, because the Japanese who just take it and just make for them on them with the reggae night. <laughs> Watch them, you know. Watch them. Yeah, this song I understand was one submitted by the Heptones earlier as a festival song. Of course, it was rejected because it was talking about equal rights and justice. It wasn't talking about no bam bam. So, the resistance to justice for black people. Yes, it's a very serious thing facing the mass, mass population here. Because the population has been told to ignore the concept of race. But the paradox is that Marcus Garvey, the first national hero, his principal African fundamentalism spoke in the first and second instance, race first and economic develop self-reliance. So what we really find now is that within this majority of black people, we have been divorced and separated from the philosophy of our black philosopher. The old black philosopher, Marcus Garvey, whose philosophy is more practical than that of Jesus. Marcus Garvey's philosophy is practical. It talks about building the race. It's not about building up the world because no one group of people can build up the rest of the world. You build up yourself first. So the racial building, what Garvey spoke about, leadership in this country and the people of the Christian, and Christian faith thinks that race is not important. So in that denial, in that state of denial, much pain, and affliction I and I will feel. Because when you deny the identity, you're going to take on the suffering of the aliens, forces that you, that you identify with. So Garvey's idea of black self-reliance wasn't fully appreciated in his time on this island. So he's born on the island, you know, and he comes out in this emancipated period and you recognize that the plantation forces are saying, no, this black majority must not express itself. It must remain under control. And Garvey was forced to leave the island. That principle still works. Because enough of our black thinkers have been forced to leave this island. There's a very strange thing going on here. And after 51 years, with so many Jamaicans living outside the island, we have to begin to wonder now, you know, why is it so much of our talent is on the outside? And what will it take for all that, most of that talent to reorganize and come forward and set this place the way the place is supposed to set? So we have an issue with the, the anthem. There's no vibes in it. 
They want you to stand stiff, and African people have rid him. And the majority of our people here are Africans, so the anthem should have rid him. Yeah, why are we in denial? So the last Olympic last championships, Bolton Blake felt the rhythms and decided to move. And they were highly chastised by that stiff section of society. That colonial order that is coming out of that British tradition. If we are politically independent, we must recognize that we must also be culturally independent also. Because in the culture, our culture is not British. We are an African people. And if we embrace that Africanness, then we we'll probably have a better quality of life amongst ourselves here. You see the national food now? Very serious. And I'm saying it is connected to the sickness and the ill health of the black population. We're suffering from diabetes and hypertension and things called high blood pressure. And that salt fish, which does not come from Jamaica, and that ackee that has to be conned to taste. When you put that together and you feed a population on that as a national food, by the time the man reach 50, the prostate thing kick in. Because it is obvious that there is a serious relationship between ackee and the prostate. No man in denial of that because they get addicted to ackee. It's strategized, you know, because the wealthy people of this country don't look at Aki as anything national. Aki was a food that they escaped. Black people found as food in the hills. And many of I and I died eating Aki before we come to recognize that it must be at a certain level of opening first. Yes, trial and error. The North man dead figuring out how to eat the Aki. So how can that not be a national dish? It's more like a survival dish. And those who designed this must have understood the repercussions that the black population, when the man reached in their 50s, most of the man themselves fade away. Medical problems and their small amount of resources now goes into the medical industry. They are being treated for prostate enlargement. Problems now with their reproduction system and the black man. So what, the, what the system does is work real for about 40 years. From about 16 to, to about 50, 55. And by that time, the thing kick in and everybody starts suffering from enlarged prostate. Look at the link between what we're eating and how we're living. Or what we're eating and how we're dying. The Metamorphosis, Size FM. When I 